did accompany me uh, from the beginning to the end. Because today I have uh, a different approach. I know the first session must have been painful to parents, and indeed I have no apologies to make because we have to make a lesson to reclaim our children, to recover our children, to recover our children. And devil cannot steal our children. We have to get back our children. We have to get back our daughters. We have to get back our sons. We have to get back our grandchildren. That one, I think, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go full throttle up to the end of the journey until the church recovers the children that God had destined to be with us. This morning, I want us to continue with another phase for the youths of this country because I am fearing that it's very important to know that God created you, young man, young lady. He created you a lovely person. Mother, father, parents, remember, your children were wonderful, created, were wonderful, made by God. Support them, support them, support your child, support your son, support your daughter, for he was created in a very magnificent way. Wonderful they were made. By who? By God. God made our children in a very wonderful way. And that's why today I want us to consider this. Let's go to the book of Psalms 139 uh, and we consider a few verses. Psalms 139 uh, will be our leading verse today. Uh, then Psalms, Ephesians, I mean, uh, also will also guide us. Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. And with that, I think we'll be able uh, 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 to make a point home for our children because we need to let them know that they were wonderfully created by God. Therefore, we are reading the two contexts or the two uh, verses. That is Psalms 139, verse 16. 15, 16, 17, and then Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. They will be our point uh, of reference. That's what we are going to refer to as we talk to our young people. Let us read, uh, both, most likely now in English, uh, and possibly in Tukuyu for parents to understand. Let's read. Can you read? My substance was not hidden from you, for now I was made in secret and curiously wrote in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes did not see my substance yet, being imperfect, and in your book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned when as yet, when as yet there was none of them. How precious! Also, are your thoughts to me, O oh God? How great are some of them? How great is some of them? Is the sum of them? Wow! Yeah, this is it now. That uh, God is saying clearly in the book of Psalms, chapter one, that, chapter one thirty nine. Verses 15, 16, and 17, that he went afraid. He went afraid magnificently. Awesomely made that child in his or her mother's womb. This is very interesting to know that a child was formed by God in his mother's womb. And this one. You cannot help it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's read in Kikuyu for the sake of the parents 
who really uh, maybe would like to follow me as we as we go on in India. Read in the queen, my brother. <laughs> Mm. Hallelujah! And brothers, sisters, God formed you, God formed that child, God formed that boy, that girl, that gentleman, that lady, in a wonderful way. When you even didn't know, he made his new, he made his bones, he made his muscles, he created his blood, he knew his brains. God made that child, even when you didn't know. Meaning that God knew your son, God knew your daughter, even when he was in the womb, you didn't know him, you didn't know her, but God knew that child. And now that one goes without a saying that God cared and cares for that child even before he came to this world. God was responsible. God was looking after that child even before he was born. Young man, young woman, young lady, my youths, I'm telling you that God knew you. God knows you and God knows your destiny. God knew you, he knows you today and he has your destiny tomorrow. Therefore, do not be confused. Some people may argue you that actually a fetus when it's in a womb is useless and that's why some women go ahead and exercise their personal right free will even to abort children when they are in the womb no god knows even that fetus when he or she is being aborted god knew him even for making he knew what he was making you don't know what how he was formed how she was formed and yet you go ahead and abort that fetus david knew that god had made him wonderful and that's why he confessed that's why he confessed that he was wonderful made wonderfully lord wonderfully wired wonderfully created wonderfully hallelujah he was wonderfully created by god why because david wanted to acknowledge and appreciate what god had done to him david was a shepherd he knew that david was a war man he knew that david was you know a, 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 a warrior David was a king. David was a harpist. David was a psalmist. David was a wise man. David was an outgoing person. David was a happy son. David was strong. David, David, David. He knew all that God had done to him. Therefore, he was appreciating the uniqueness, the uniqueness that God had formed him with. My friend, my son, my daughters, God made you in a wonderful way. You are unique. You don't look like any other person. Genetically, biologically, even your fingerprint, it doesn't relate. It doesn't it, that, it is not similar to any other in the world. You are sweat. Sweat, sweat from your armpits does not smell like any other in the world. 
Your eyeballs are different from any other person in the world. Your brains are different from any other person in the world because you are wonderfully made. You are height, you are, you know, you are, you are, you are feet, you are body, you are voice, everything in you. Surely, I can tell you, there is a distinction between you and that other person. David knew and acknowledged this because he knew that the infinite God created a finite man in a wonderful way but again in his own image and likeness. Imagine how wonderful is that. And if the external is wonderful, the internal, which is spiritual, is more wonderful than the external. Even in case you chose to follow the internal, the spiritual part of uh, you that God created, you are more wonderful. That's where you are more miraculous. A man remains a miraculous being. You are a miraculous person. If you check, even in case you look closely, from the head to the toe and see the wonders, the miracles that are there in any man, you remain wondering and you remain you remain in the law because every organ from the head to the toe is a miracle. It is a mystery. It is, you know, it is unfathomable, something that you can think of. Because God had really, had really made a very, a very wonderful creature in you. And that one becomes more once you receive salvation. If you receive salvation, then you are wonderful. Why did God make you with uniqueness? Because he wanted that uh, exceptional qualities in you to bring glory and beauty. Understand me well. Glory and beauty to his kingdom. Understand that. Therefore, any person that you find who has a defect, be it he is limping, be it he is, you know, he has, he has inability to see, he has inability to hear, that is just a injury that occurred during growth in the womb. But he was created perfectly, but a injury, an accident, an accident occurred during the growth of that child. It is not that he was not wonderfully made, but still, God is going to do a wonderful thing. He is going to bring beauty in the kingdom of God because of this child. That's why you find that we are endowed, we are gifted with even different tools to sing, to preach, to pray, we are gifted differently so that we can bring beauty, harmony, sweetness in the kingdom of God. Therefore, creation is not an accidental thing. Creation, creation is something well thought of, deliberately done by God so that he can achieve his objective. He didn't do it for any other purpose. He didn't do it. Even when you get rich, he didn't make you rich so that at least you can be proud. He made you rich so that you can enrich the kingdom of God. You can bring beauty in the kingdom of God. And unfortunately, is that once you get wealthy, some of us are becoming proud. You become beautiful. You become Miss Kenya. Some of us cannot even stand where others are because they are very, very beautiful. God created that beauty so that it can bring, it can bring glory and honor to the kingdom of God. You are handsome. Oh, I love that. Awesome. But that handsomeness was created to bring beauty in the kingdom of God. 
Oh, yes, you are strong. Hallelujah. That strength was designed by God so that it can bring beauty in the kingdom of God. There is no other reason anyway. God created you different from me, different from any other person, so that you can bring vrefa, you can bring sweetness in the kingdom. You can flower, mawa mawa. You can flower the kingdom of God using that beauty, using that intelligence, using that average intelligence, using that degree, using that diploma, using those millions, using those billions. You see that big lad? Oh, you bring, you bring glory. You bring flowers. You bring beauty in the kingdom of God. That's why some of these talents have been misplaced. They have been taken where they don't deserve to be. But because they were not supposed to be where they are. They are supposed to be where I'm talking about. Where? In the kingdom of God to fulfill the will of God and bring glory to the kingdom of God. You are a flower created for that purpose. Ephesians 2. Let's go to Ephesians 2, verse 8, 9, and 10. But let's know that the purpose of every gift is not meant for the worldly glory. It is not meant for personal gain. Anything that you do to edify yourself. Anything that you do selfishly is idol worship. You are an idolater in case whatever you are doing is just aimed at making selfish gains in your life. God created you for his own purpose. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. And then we will get more from that. Thank you. God bless you. Let's read in both English and Hebrew. Thank you. For, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, let, lest no man should boast. For we are his works, workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus to, to good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Therefore, God created that son of yours, that daughter of yours. He created you, he created me, so that, so that we can do his work, the work of glory, the work of loving, the work of mercy, the work of grace, the work of making others come to salvation. Therefore, the purpose of every gift and every difference in life is to do the works of God. Because he knew you, even when people didn't know you, he knows you, he knew even the gift in you, even before your mother knew you. Therefore, the purpose of your creation is well, well defined by God and in his scriptures. Two, he even knows the number of days. That is Psalms 139. Verse 15b. He knows the number of days that you are going to live in this world. Young man, don't be cheated that you die because of poverty. Don't be cheated that you die because you know you have not you have not had food for the last two days. You have not had a drink, can you kidogo? Convenient. You have not had a smoke, kidogo. No, you not die, my friend. 
You will not die because you don't have money. You will not die because you are not married. You will not die until you fulfill. You fulfill the desires of God. That's why I'm saying, let us dedicate our life, our gifts to God so that we can fulfill his desire, his initial plan that he had with us and for us. God knew you. And actually, time is coming according to the book of Revelation when everything, everything in you will be put in a clear, a clear house and you'll be seen the bones, the marrows, the sneak, the heart, the brains will be seen clearly by everybody. And that's why even your actions, my actions will be exposed because my inner person will be exposed because time is coming. And this is very known by even people like St. Thomas of Aquinas that actually time is coming in heaven when even our innermost hidden parts will be exposed. And that's why God had created a naked person. He wanted to expose. He wanted to expose a person because he knew you. He knew you even before you were born. Genesis chapter 2 verse 21 without reading. The Lord created man and woman and both of them were naked and they were not ashamed because God knows you. In the book of Revelation, the Bible says that you be naked and nothing will be hidden. That's what the book of Revelation says. Revelation chapter 3 verse 18. You will be naked, meaning you are in a part, the lands, the kidneys, everything, everything will be very clear. Therefore, you had better today decided to do what the Lord decides because he fashioned you for a purpose. And anything that comes along the way should only be aimed at fulfilling his purpose and his desires. And by so doing, my friend, you'll be allied with God. I am the way I am because God made me this way. I can do whatever he wants for my life. I don't have to be someone else. Quote of the day, I can be myself. Young men and young women, my dear youths, you are the way you are because God made you the way you are. And you can do whatever God wants with your life. You don't have to imitate. You don't have to help anybody else because you are not like that other person. Don't say you are smoking because others are smoking. Don't say you are drinking because others are drinking. Don't say you are seeing pornography because others are viewing pornography. Don't say you are lazy because others are lazy. Don't say you are undressed because others have undressed. My dress, my case. Don't say you are going to put the push-ups in your, in, your, in your bust so that at least they can come to the mouth because others are doing it. Don't say you are going to be naked because others are naked. You are yourself and you are unique. Don't say it is fashionable to drink. Don't say it is fashionable to put on a sagging trouser. Don't, because God created you uniquely, you know, specially. You are special made. Why are you doing things? Because others are doing. You are not yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. Because God wanted you to exercise that self-will and that freedom so that at least you can fulfill his desire. God created you to do his specialized works. Specialized works. And in the process of doing his specialized work, you are going to benefit. 
you as a person, your family, and the community. God wants to see success in whatever he planned. In whatever he planned. He planned great things for you, therefore he wants to see the great plans being achieved at all times because that was his purpose. Every day should be a day to share the word of God. Every day should be a day to share the greatness of God, the beauty of God, the miracles of God in your life. In your life. Because your life is different from mine. Therefore, share that will in every day. Every day. Daily, share the will of God. To appreciate what God has done to you. We must learn to appreciate what God has done to us. God cares for you because he cares for his glory. As he cares for you, young man, he cares for his glory. Therefore, even in case you are following the will of God, God will take care of you. Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Because God's intention is to see you to add to that his desire is fulfilled. That is why he is caring for you. So that at least one day you will bring to fruition success to his desire, his destination. That's why you have not died. Even though you have been, you know, you have been chaotic in life. You have been chaotic in the world. God still cares for you so that you may glorify him. You may bring glory to his kingdom. That's why he has cared for you. That's why he's protecting you. That's why you have not died. Despite the fact that you have been chaotic, you have been here and there. You have been in a mess, you are a mess. But God still cares for you. Therefore, come out from that mess. Come out from that mess and do the will of God. Fulfill the will of God. That is it. And that's what you should do now. My prayer today to the young men and the young women is to follow the will of God. A simple prayer. I thank the Lord for how he made me. I thank the Lord for how he made me. Don't forget, he made you not necessarily a genius, not necessarily an engineer, not necessarily a doctor, not necessarily a nurse, not necessarily a farmer. He made you to be what you want. And we can never be the same. Some were created to be doctors. To do what? To bring glory to God. Some were created to be engineers. To do what? To bring glory to God. Some were created to be farmers. To do what? To bring glory to God. Some were created to be professors. To do what? To bring glory to God. Some were created to be wealthy. To do what? To bring glory to God. Some were created to be beautiful and handsome. To do what? To bring glory to God. Some were created to be drivers. To do what? To bring glory to God. Some were created. Some were created to be the night watchmen. To do what? To go the To do what? To bring glory to God. Some were created to be wives. To do what? To bring glory to God. Some we are created to be husbands. To do what? To bring glory to God. And that's our prayer. I thank the Lord for how He made me. I accept God's appointed work for my life as the best thing for me and all concerned. Oh, hallelujah. I believe God will empower me to carry them out. I therefore, from now on, discipline, understand this, I therefore, from now on, discipline myself to stay close to God and focus on his good works. I repeat. I therefore, from today on, will discipline myself 
to stay close to God and focus on his good works. I'll give praise for the great things he is doing, he did, and he will do in my life. I will give praise, oh hallelujah, for the great things he did, he is doing, and he will do in my life. Amen. This is a prayer of faith. A prayer of faith. Meaning what? Let us now turn to God because he did great things. He is doing great things and he will do great things to that young man. Therefore, kindly, can you live your innocent life of drugs? Can you read your innocent life of pornography? Can you read your innocent life of sexuality, innocent sex? Can you read your innocent life of cheating your parents through the video? Can you read your innocent life of being a liar? Can you read your innocent life of being a lazy bird? Can you read your innocent life of being a drug pedra, a drug user? Can you live so that at least you can fulfill the will of God? The will of God. And by so doing, God cared for you. He is caring for you. He will care for you as long as you are doing his, your, his will. Parents, don't despise children simply because they are not like us. Where you have engineers and doctors and lawyers, kindly accept even those low colors, the certificates, the, even the dropouts, accept them, appreciate them. For God destined that through every color in life, He wants to be glorified. And may your son, may your daughter, irrespective of his level of education, glorify God and bring glory and honor to your family. The book of Ecclesiastes says, I won't repeat here, chapter 15 says, verse 16 says, that even if you get all the wealth, even if you get so rich, your money at the end of the day is just to please your eyes. You not make use of your money, but anything, anything that is going to satisfy your soul, that's going to give you peace is better than money. Children, deliberate today. Decide today to give your parents peace. To give your parents joy. Because a clear sister again will come and say that it were better that your parents were parent because of the agony they are going through. But today, I want us to change that scenario. I want us to change that, you know, that morning that is coming from the mouth of your father, the mouth of your mother, the mouth of your grandmother. Let us change it today so that at least the Lord will bless you. You are created for a purpose. God knew you. He knows you and he will know you. God decided great things for you. He is carrying on with great things. And he will carry on with great things in your life. May you deliberately do this. And God will see you through this life and after. God bless you. God be with you. The Lord of hosts be with you. The Lord bless you. The Lord save you. The Lord give you all that he has decided and desired to give you. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. God be with you until next week. Amen.